three realms of the prophetic office. In order to flow greater depths of the prophetic, it is imperative that we comprehend the three realms of prophecy. We must know which realm is the individual prophesying from because there are three realms of prophecy and people who are called by God, prophets who are called by God, prophesy from these three realms. And we must know which realm is the individual prophesying from. There is a realm I call the realm of authority. Prophets do not operate the same. Men of God do not operate the same. They operate differently. I operate differently from every other person. It is different operation every single day. It must not be the same because we are called differently. And as we are called differently, our operation is different. The way I operate is different from the way somebody also operate but in order to flow in deeper depths we must understand the level we are operating from which realm are we prophesying from first kings chapter 17 the bible said elijah the tisbite of the inhabitants of gila said to ahab as the lord of israel live before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain this year except at my word do you notice that elijah said except at my word he didn't say at the word of god he said except at my word that was very bold of him to say that let me explain something and let me explain what elijah was actually going through so that you can understand it very well he said there shall not be rain or dew in this land except at my word and he was standing before a king now you can stand before anybody and make a decrease and declaration but not before a king it doesn't just happen like that the bible said in the book of Isaiah, the chapter 6 Isaiah made a profound statement he said the year king Uzziah died i saw the lord why will a man see the lord the year the king died one of the things you should understand is that kings do not just occupy spaces on earth and they do not just occupy thrones on earth but they also occupy scepters in the realm of the spirit that is why there are some business when the devil wants to do business with some people he look for people who are occupying some thrones some strategic position on earth there are some group of people the devil will never do business with he will not come because what he wants where you are you may not be able to provide him so if the devil wants to achieve more he look for men that are strategic that have been positioned in very very strategic positions so the devil will look for people like kings people with influence people with faith that is why you see the devil cutting deals with people that have occupied some thrones on earth this happened so he said the year king Uzziah died i Isaiah, saw the lord but i just want you to know that he was not just standing in front of mere people, but this man was standing in front of King Ahab, a king whose wife was Jezebel. And these people, they did abominable thing in the face of God, not just in the sight of God. These people has a lot of gods. And these gods that they were having were powerful. They could also perform miracles and they could produce results. But the gentleman stood in front of them and said, I According to my word, unless by my word, which means until I speak, nothing happens. That was very bold. You need to understand that there is a realm. If you are not in that realm, you can't make such statement. That is a realm where God begins to hearken to the voice of his vessel. That is how prophets operate in this realm. And a man in that realm speaks and whatever the man speaks comes to pass. And when you even meet those group of people or those categories of people, you know that this is what they are saying. Now, Elijah came, Elijah saw, Elijah conquered. Whatever he says, manifest. Whatever he says came to pass. Except by my word, there shall not be dew nor rain. And I know King Ahab and then the leaders and some people laughed because for a few days, probably they were expecting rain. A number of days, there was no rain. They were still expecting. And for six months, there was no rain. For one year, no rain. Two years, no rain. And they were now alert that no, whatever the man spoke is actually coming to pass. You need to understand that there is a realm called the realm of authority. You don't just enter there because you are gifted. It is access based on so many principles, covenant principle. There were men of God in the Bible that tapped into this dimension. And then that realm of authority that they tapped into, when we are reading, we knew that this man was in that authority. Reading and talking about that, there was was a gentleman in the bible also called joshua now the bible says something in the book of joshua the chapter 10 joshua was having issues let me say he was fighting a battle with the 
Amorites. And these Amorites and then the Israelites were in a serious battle. And Joshua made a prayer. He told the sun to stand still over Gibeon and the moon in the valley of what? Al Jalon. So the Bible said the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge on their enemies. The sun and the moon obeyed the voice of Joshua. In the verse 14 it says, there had not been no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hid the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. How was that possible? Because the man walked with God to a particular degree and dimension where the words of the man, look, it wasn't the Lord who told Joshua to stop the sun and the moon. No, he stopped it by his own discretion. He spoke it and the Lord does it. So you should understand that there is a level or there is a dimension where you walk with God that you speak things and whatever you say, that is what the Lord does. You say it, he does it. Why? Because God honored the words of his people. But that happened at a particular height. It happened at a particular realm. That is why I said there are three realms of the prophetic office. I know there are people you still do not understand some prophets. And you are still confused about some prophets. The truth is that there are different categories of prophets. One of the things you should understand is Joshua spoke. He commanded. And whatever he said came to pass. You should understand that God do not just honor his word like that. If you see God honoring his word word in the life of somebody, you should know that that person have really touched the heart of God. Elijah was such a man. He touched the heart of God. Joshua was also such a man. David was such a man. You know, these were people that spoke and whatever they spoke they had it. They were operating from a realm of authority. The Bible said in the book of 2 Kings, the kings have sent people to invite Elijah. It was just an invitation. Elijah said if I be, you and I know that the word if in the realm of faith is doubt. If you are using the word if in the realm of faith it means you are doubting God. But the guy said if I be a man of God he did not pray. It was a statement. If I be. So he uses even the if carry power the if was a language of doubt. So he said, if I be a man of God and fire came down, it was a statement he was making. If I be, his if alone carries power than some of us when we gather our faith together. And fire came down. Now, God never asked him to call the fire. He just called the fire. He was just, so you realize that there is a realm of authority that Elijah had moved into. To understand that realm, we need to understand three little words. The first Greek word is the word agathos. When we understand these three little words, we have moved into that dimension. Elijah moved into that dimension that even by saying, if I, if I, immediately using the if, fire was gathering. Now, these are men who did things that we never endorse. I will never endorse what Elijah did as a prophet because killing the people was wrong because number one, they came based on a command. They are not representing themselves. They were representing the king. So, this group of people were representing the king. So, they came because they represented somebody. The fire still responded to the words of the prophet. Why? Because the prophet had moved into a particular dimension. So now I want you to understand some three little words. Three little words. And you are in that dimension. And the number one is agathos. Which in the Greek means good. The second Greek word is dikaios. Which means righteousness. And the third one is Hagios, which means holiness. These are the three little words that would determine or that would move us into that realm which Elijah was operating inside. Very simple. There is a realm of authority you do not access until you access a particular realm. If you understand these three words, boom, you enter that realm. When God calls a prophet, he prepares him from Agathos because a prophet will be judged according to his Agathos. God don't call a prophet until he prepares him from Agathos. That word Agathos is talking about good. Now in the book of Matthew 7 verses 15, Jesus is talking about false prophets and true prophets. And he made a statement like this. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are fierce wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do man gather grapes from thorns? bushes or thick but tessels. even so every good the word good there is talking about every agathos every agathos tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit every tree 
that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. No bad tree can bear good fruit. And no good tree can bear bad fruit. If you are of God, you are of God. If you are of the devil, you cannot fake it. You can fake miracles. The fruit you should see in a prophet and know he's from God is not the gift. It is not the eloquency. It is not the dress code. You can fake many things, but there is something you can fake. And that is the presence of God. And the presence of God is actually the first fruit that should be discerned in the life of every man that say he's coming from God. A man who said he's coming from me. What do you need in that man to believe that he's really coming from me? There are some things in me that you should see in that man. Is that not right? If there's nothing in the man that can be traceable to me or that is traceable to me, it's not from me. So if a man said he's from God, there is something that man should carry. And it is not a gift. If what you are carrying, the devil can also give it. It is not enough proof that you're from God. So that is why accuracy in the prophetic is not a proof that the man is from God. Sometimes miracles are not proofs that people are from God. What is the proof? When the man carries the presence of God. There are many people that don't know the presence of God. And that is where we have a big problem. Because if at this your level, you still don't know what is the presence of God. That is where the issue is. So what is a proof that a man is from God? The presence. Miracles can be fake. Prophecies can be fake. But you can't fake his presence. It is not possible. It is impossible to fake his presence. So he said, by their fruits, you shall what? Know them. And he said, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot be a good fruit so anything that is from god produces god anything that comes from god produces what god and that is the agathos so when god is calling a prophet he calls him from the realm of agathos that is the realm of good and that agathos it is directed towards the heart a good heart because the physical manifestation is what is in the inside of you you cannot manifest what is not in the inside of you it is not possible you may find it for some time but as time goes on as you don't have it you fall from it so the essence and the nature of the tree must be agathos and it must be what good so the word good in the bible both in hebrew and in greek points towards the heart but one of the things i want you to understand is that the produce of the seed is determined by the person's heart so the heart's condition is important to god you notice that some people have a good heart but some people don't have a good heart god deals with the heart so that is where the call to a realm of authority begins from. If you don't have a good heart, you may not enter that realm. That is why there are people you think they don't deserve what they are having, but God is fine with them. Because when someone went to the house of Jesse, he missed it. He looks at the physical appearance, but the Lord said, you judge from the outward, but I judge from the inward. So the call of God to a realm of authority begins with the heart. Watch that. God was looking for somebody to occupy an important position. That is a position of authority, influence. And he was not looking for a man with stature. He was looking for a man with a good heart. So when God is calling a prophet to a realm of authority, he checks the heart. There are people here who think that when God is going to call a prophet, he checks how he can fast. No, sir. Your Fasting don't move God. It does not change God. Whether you fast or not, God is God. Yeah, you fast for a thousand years. It will not move him because do you know why? He never eats. He don't drink. He never gets thirsty and he never gets hungry. You know, that is the amazing thing about him. The beginning of the call to the realm of authority in the prophetic. Not just the prophetic. In spiritual matters and affairs, it begins with the heart. He told someone, you judge from the outward, but I judge from the heart. Do you know why God do not involve in so many political elections? Because it's the choice of the people. It is not the choice of God. It is the people that chooses the president that is why you can have a wicked president why because he's not the choice of god he's the choice of the people you can have a bad mp why he's not the choice of god he's, he's the choice of the people but if the people involve god in their choices he will choose to write for them and the choice of god will begin from the heart so Agathos is a realm where authority begins a good and honest heart that is a realm where authority begins from Agathos. And it is my prayer that someone who is watching is not just walking in the prophetic, even ruling, occupying important positions in life. Agathos is needed. It conditions you for supernatural encounters. It prepares you to meet God. It prepares you to meet God. Hear me well. A man with a good heart can sin and the Lord will be waiting for him 
to be restored. And there is another man with, with a wicked heart who is fasting. You can fast and pray with a wicked heart, with a bad heart, with an evil heart. Watch. The Bible said the people came together and they bound themselves. They fasted and said, until Paul died, they will not they will not eat. It was not a fasting to deliver someone. It was a fasting to kill. There are many Christians who fasted 14 days to kill an old lady they believe is a witch in the house. That's an evil heart. But now, I want to show you something. There is a realm of authority where prophets operate from. It starts from the Agathos. So you need a good heart. So God prepares you from the Agathos. He prepares you from that dimension, from that realm where you begin to walk, you begin to operate in the supernatural realm of God. You say something, it happens. You say this, it happens. If you are going to be called into a kingship position, if God is the one calling you, prophetic position, apostolic office, realms of power, realms of authority, a realm that none of your word falls to the ground, it begins with Agathos, good heart. Stop complicating things. You are on top of a mountain praying. Is your heart good? Why do you want the power? You, who is asking God, have you examined yourself why you need the power? Why am I looking for this? Have you examined yourself? If you check yourself very well, you will discover that there are things you have to put in order before you come back to God and ask him for that power you are looking for.